Hello guys! I know, it's like been forever since I did a video. So this video is basically going to be about my life update. I know, I haven't talked to you guys in months. I just wanted to spend the time to take care of me, and my family, and everything I needed to do. I've wanted to do videos, I just kind of never got around to it. Just kind of didn't have the time. Or... I get on my camera, the battery's dead, no room on the memory card. You know how that goes. Um, <clears throat> so this video is going to be a little bit about everything. It's going to be like a hodgepodge of stuff. I'm going to try to sort of tell you guys like a story in the timelines and things like that. Everything is good with me and Jeff and the dogs, Spike and Gavin. But we've had a lot of new stuff happen to us and for us, for our lives. Um, so I'm going to try not to make this too long, but get a beer or whatever, sit down, you know, it's probably going to be a long video, probably. So, um, nowhere to start, I'm just going to throw it out there. April 1st, we actually moved into a house. Yep, that's alright. After Jeff and I had been together for a year, we ended up moving into a house. We rent the house, it's over in Willow Glen, which is a really, really nice, rich part of San Jose in California. And his cousin actually owns the house. And it had been vacant for like eight months to a year. And Jeff would always go there to this house to do gardening for his cousin because he took over his dad's gardening business about a year ago, a year and a half ago. And um, the house was just vacant. And her, his cousin was dealing with her dad's death and everything. So I said, well, the house has been vacant for so long, why don't we see if we can rent it out? We talked to her, she, you know, so the price is this much, we worked out a deal, we ended up renting it. So, you know, moving into a house takes time, takes adjustment. You gotta work your ass off to pay this rent, to pay all the utilities, to buy all this stuff, to create a house, because Jeff pretty much came from not really having anything, because he lived at his dad's house and took care of his dad forever. And I came from the van life, so I had nothing, pretty much. I had sold off all my furniture, all my possessions. All I had, pretty much, was what was left in my van. Maybe a couple other little things at a friend's garage. So, we've lived in the house since April 1st. And it's been a very interesting journey. It reminds me why I did van life in so many aspects. I mean, it was cool to have a house. I mean, it was great. The dogs love it. Um, it's pretty big, pretty spacious. I ended up to make up for rent, I couldn't see ourselves living in a house or a place if we couldn't make money from it. So Jeff is able to store all his garden tools and everything and eventually he wanted to do the tree cutting business because he did that before and to get all the equipment and he could store it at the property that we're at. And then I was able to board dogs so I could have dogs at our house for doggy daycare or for pet sit so I could take in more clients. But the downside with that is, yeah, you could bring in more clients, bring in more business, but you're just shelling it out to rent. And I mean, we decided to rent this place because I'm here now, <laughs> my own bathroom. Uh, but we're here now because uh, it was a place where, you know, we could do our work and do more work and do other things like if we wanted to do van builds and stuff like that. Um, Speaking of van builds, we pretty much finished my van. There's probably a couple things we still need to do, but we built it out really nice. Floors, everything. Uh, I still need to do a video on that, but I wanted to put all the stuff back into it that we had taken out since we had the house. Um, but we built it out really nice. We got to go to RTR. That was awesome. We're going to go again in January when it comes up. So we hope to see everybody there. Um, please go. It's a good time. It's great. No, we didn't have any problems or anything. We took the dogs, like, no problem. My only regret is we should have taken the mountain bikes and we should have stayed longer. <laughs> um, so, anyways, also, the reason we moved into the house is, um, you know, for a lot of different reasons. We wanted to know what's it going to be like to live under the same roof if Jeff and I are, are to be the forevers kind of couple and stay together long term, you know we needed to, van life was kind of hard for him. He could do it, but in smaller stints. Me, I love van life. It's just my thing. I 
I, it just totally works for me and my lifestyle. Like I just love so many parts of it. Like that's just where I'm supposed to be. That's my calling. You know, if not that, maybe a tiny little house out on a couple acres. That's my only other place I think I'd want to live probably. But anyways, um, so, you know, we're getting to the point where it's a one year mark also. And it's like, if we're going to live, like want to be together, we need to see how we live together. Like we live together a lot at Jeff's dad's house, but we didn't have to pay bills and finances. We still kept our own accounts. We were responsible for our own bills. But when you live together, you're creating a house, you're creating a life together way more than when you just visit each other's place and stuff, you know? So it made us realize how things are to live together, like full time, bills, everything, work, you know, and I help him with his business because he's, you know, self-employed as well as I am doing the dog walks, pet sitting, pet care, all that sort of stuff. Um, and Jeff's dad was getting really old. He's like 81, but he's had Alzheimer's for about mm, the last 10 years. So, you know, it gets worse and worse and his care, he needed to go to a, you know, adult care facility, old folks home, however you want to talk, however you want to call it, you know, it was kind of time for his dad to make that move and with Jeff having a place else to go, um, they were able to find a place for his dad to go, which is great, it's a good environment for him and everything else, a lot better than sitting at home all the time, and he got the round the clock care that he needed. So that was good, so we moved out, we moved into the house you know, did this thing for, you know, it's been six months now, um, and, you know, Jeff's sister is gonna try to sell the house, but technically she's not supposed to, or shouldn't be, anyways, I don't want to get too much into that stuff, to be honest, um, so we've been here since April, and the last couple months, like, we really tried. We really wanted to make this happen. I mean, we have a huge, beautiful backyard for the dogs. Gorgeous neighborhood. I feel safe here. You know, in ways we wanted to make it work. And we could still. But in other ways, it's like we're just working and spinning our wheels. And if you guys ever lived in a house, you know what that's like. Where you work so many hours. Even if you own the house. I feel like it's the same. Because you're just fixing it up, taking care of it, you work so many hours, then you got to come home, take care of all the home stuff, and then you're like, I don't even get to spend that much time here, or after working so much to pay the mortgage, to pay rent, to pay all these utilities, no matter how much you try not to use water, electricity, blah, 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 it's still a bill you have to pay along with everything else, you know, and then you're like, how much do I have left over in my pocket? why am I doing this? This isn't what life's all about. And I know that, but I think it was a good reminder why I do the van life, you know, and how it affects you as a person and the patterns you fall into living the house life. And I never quite remember having those patterns, but you know, you come home and you're tired from work and you're miserable with everything and overwhelmed with everything that has to be done, like always dishes, always this. Now it's time to do that. Now we gotta do the yard. Now we gotta do this. Oh, and now we got, and then you're just like exhausted and overwhelmed. For me, it's so much to take care of on a day to day when you already take care of like little living creatures all day. Then you come home and there's even more to take care of and deal with. And you don't have the time and you're tired and you're like, ah, oh, I'll do it another time. Then you're wasting your weekends cleaning and taking care of all the shit. Every time you turn around, there's another bill due, you didn't make enough, you know, no matter how hard you thought you hustled, no matter what money came in or didn't come in, you know, it's not living out of your means. We were able to make it happen and make it work, you know, but it becomes just this vicious circle, you know, and so we kind of were thinking, yeah, this isn't working, let's not do this anymore, you know, and... I missed the closeness I had with my dogs when I lived in the van. I missed, like, you can clean the van in less than 20 minutes, top to bottom, you know, piece of cake. Like, it just takes a couple minutes. Like, you just put your clothes away, sweep the floor, make sure your dishes are done, and that's pretty much it. You know, you just put things back right away. My van was always moving because I use it for work. So every morning and every night, I pretty much had stuff put away. 
you know, like so it was so easy because you have like very little things, you know, and in a house you just accumulate and accumulate and it's like, where does all this come from? Who put this here? You know, how does this happen? And it gets overwhelming no matter how organized you are. I'm a super master organizer, but it's still just to me overwhelming. I like having less. Um, and then, so, you know, we tossed around, let's leave the situation, let's not be here anymore, do you want to leave at the end of October, do you want to leave at the end of November? I didn't care what work I already had booked, I just needed to make us happy and we needed to change the situation that we're in. So, um, and then, you know, the landlord changed the agreement that we had because she couldn't remember what she had said and because it was all verbal, even though I wanted to get everything in writing what the agreement was. But she decided to change it, and I said, it's not worth it anymore. I don't want to deal with this anymore. Like, forget it. Let's just get out of here. And, and, you know, so Jeff is able to go back to his dad's house because on the last will and trust and all that paperwork, it says he's allowed to live there until he, for as long as he needs to, you know. So we are still together. He's just going to end up being at his dad's house. I do not like being there um, for a lot of different reasons. Um, I really can't really make that work for me. So I will be going back to the van life, which I'm very happy and relieved about that. Because for me, I think with my, I guess, mental illness, Asperger's, all that stuff, it's just more of a relief, you know, I for so many reasons you know so I'm kind of happy and excited and relieved but then it's hard because now you know we have to move all our stuff out and figure out what's Jeff taking to his dad's house what I may put in storage do I want to still keep some furniture and things that we accumulated here or purge everything again you know I will give you guys a tour of our house for sure before we leave um, but anyways our landlord lady Jeff's cousin you know said Basically, because she had changed the agreement, you know, of what we were going to do. We didn't feel like fighting and working it out. And was like, well, this is what you said, blah, blah. We just said, forget it. And she said, like, why don't you guys just leave at the end of the month? And it's like, good. You know, it's kind of fate that worked out that just put it as, you know, the end of October. So it's fine. Um, in some ways, Jeff and I are relieved. It's kind of a little bit bittersweet because it's not, we don't feel like we failed. We just feel like it wasn't right for us. And I think in some ways, Jeff probably wasn't ready. And I did push him really hard. And because sometimes you don't know yourself, you don't know what you're capable of until you get pushed and challenged. And I think sometimes you will change your certain behavior patterns if you um, change like your environment, you know, and change certain aspects of your life. You know, you never know till you do or till you try. And you should never think that you failed at something. You should just think it was an adventure, it was a learning experience, it grew you as a person, it made you realize certain things or re-realize certain things, you know. Um, and we got a new family member because we moved into the house and I was like, well, and it kind of happened. So stay tuned for that video. Um, I'm not going to give you any more hints, we just got a new family member and yeah, we got a new family member and I will show you guys a video on that and we'll do a home tour. Um, also, it's been three years on the 24th of September that I bought my van, that maroon van. And I was just thinking the other day, like, how much, like, I still love that van, you know, it's transmission's getting a little weak on first gear and stuff, but that's another thing, like, looking, paying rent, paying bills, then you're looking at, I'm looking at my poor van every time I'm going to work, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna need new tires. Oh my gosh, the transmission's gonna need some work. Uh, what else could happen? Like you know, I'm, I'm like, I need to spend my money on keeping my car going so I can work and do what I do and be there for all my clients, you know? So I'm like, I'm not going to be able to pay rent and shell out hundreds of dollars. Like, Jeff can work on my van, 
But for him to have the time and the tools and for my van to be like torn apart in pieces for a little while or whatever, you know, or I remember when I got my van tires before, I think it was like $850, you know, and because I put a lot of miles, I went to Vancouver, Canada and back. I went to Quartzsite, Arizona. My car, it, my van's like my daily, all day, every day driver with the load that's in there and everything else. So yeah, it's kind of getting close to needing new tires again, you know? It's been probably three years since I put those tires on. So that's a lot of, I think my van's at like 126,000 miles and I've probably put those tires on at like 94,000 or something. So they're, they're they still got some life in them, but it's around the corner before you know it, you know? All those things add up. And it's like, how am I going to have money to do that if I'm living in a house, you know? So I'm thankful I obviously kept the van. Everyone's like, are you going to get rid of the van now that you have the house? I was like, no, I can never get rid of my van. Because also in the back of my head, I think if the apocalypse happens, or I think if the house was to burn down for whatever reason, or all hell breaks loose, I would be getting in that van with all my pets and everything else and hitting the road, you know, see you guys, you know, I'm getting out of there, you know, I could still survive, you know, um, so I can never get rid of my van. Oh, also, um, you know, so Jeff will probably be at his dad's house for a while, and I had said, well, why don't we, I thought, you know, for us to do the van life for a while, and to combine our incomes, and save up to get a Dodge Promaster, and whether Jeff is on board for that or not down the road, I'm still going to save up for one of those because I feel like it would just, I like my van, it's great, but it's only going to be able to last only for so many more years. So I would like to, now that my mechanic retired recently, also my favorite mechanic that I've known for like, I don't know, almost 15 years or something crazy or like 11, 12 years recently retired, so now I'm like, who's gonna work on my van if I ever need anything? So I better start saving up to be able to buy, uh, I wanna get a new Ram, new Dodge Ram Pro Master, because I already drive a, Ram, a Dodge, so I'm kind of feel familiar. I'm not gonna get a Sprinter. That is too expensive for me, for my taste, for my budget to get work done. Even if it's under warranty, anytime it needs anything, you just it's just too expensive. I just cannot do that. And the price of diesel where I live, like in California, is so expensive. Even if you get more mileage, I just can't imagine, you know, spinning so... Like, maybe when I felt the van now, all the way, living in the Bay Area with our gas prices, maybe I would say it's like, mm, maybe $65, $70 at the most but I don't really fill it up that much all the time, but let's just say. And then that lasts me probably a week with how much driving between like four different cities that I do um, for my work and pet sits and, you know, going wherever, you know. So diesel costs more, yeah, you're gonna get more gas mileage, but that, as soon as you pay at the pump, it's like higher around here so that's why I just went and go for it yes the engines last longer I know but if they need work it's more expensive I just can't do all that so um, me already owning a Dodge and it's already my dot my van's the Dodge 2001 2500 uh, VA mm, fuel injected it's lasted really well I've put it through a lot in the three years that I've owned it. So I kind of almost feel like, I know they don't make the new ones like they made the old ones, but I feel a little bit more entitled to that versus the Ford, sorry Ford lovers out there, but you know, that's just me and my opinion. And because I'm not really for the Nissan one, I don't really like how they look. I think they're a little probably underpowered or a little bit smaller for my needs, I think. So that's why I wasn't looking at the Nissan one because I had Japanese cars before and yes, you could run them to the ground, but when they need a part, it is expensive and they always gotta ship it. My Dodge that I currently have, I would have it in the shop and my mechanic would be like, oh, that part will be here in two hours or less. All the time, I was able to get the parts, no problem. So that's what I like and anyone can work on the Dodges pretty much, you know. Um, so that's why, and so I kind of feel like, 
you know, I, as a woman, as a female, you can't always rely on, oh, well, I've got a man in my life, he can just fix my car any old time. No. Things happen, or there are some things that will be out of their expertise, out of their knowledge, and you'll think, who's going to work on my vehicle? So that's kind of why I'd like in a year, sooner would be greater, but to be able to um, get a new vehicle. I've never had a new vehicle, so I'd be excited. I think I deserve it. I think I need it, and because it is my home on wheels, and then I'll build it out what I want, how I want it exactly. I cannot afford like these, um, oh, what are they? Uh, I forget. Some of the other Class B RVs are gorgeous inside, but I don't think they could handle my day-to-day -day zigzagging all over town. I don't think they could handle that workload and all of that stuff, you know. Um, I'm just checking that it's still recording. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, what else, what else? But yeah, pretty cool. I've had my van for three years. Um, I had been a nomad for four years. So before my van, I had like a bus that I lived in for about a year, year and a half. The bus and the van life kind of overlapped a little bit. But um, I'm kind of excited to go back to van life, to be honest. Like, it's just, I loved it. I loved, you know, I probably should do a video again of why I loved van life, you know. And I feel more part of the van life community than I have living in a house in a neighborhood. We live in a really nice neighborhood. We know all our neighbors. They're really cool. But I feel like more part of a community, even though van lifers are like all over the world, but I feel like we have more of a tighter knit community than people that live in houses do. You know, it's very interesting that way. Um, and of course, I'm keeping my dogs going back to van life. Like, they go hand in hand, I think. Like, you know, that was a question for anybody. I would never get rid of my dogs no matter what. Even if I ended up on the streets, pushing around a shopping cart with my possessions, I would never get rid of my dogs. You know what I mean? That's my babies, my everything. So if that question came up, if anyone's thinking of that, you know. Um, I'm going to try to wrap this up soon. I'm trying to think anything else. But yeah, life's just been, you know, we've just been trying to get through a lot, processing a lot, experiencing a lot. Um, you know raising Gavin, you know, my new rescue, well, it's almost been, a, it's been a year since I got him. It's crazy how it's been a year. That year went by, like, so fast. And because he was a rescue and he had ran the streets before and who knew his past, so, you know, it was raising him too and, and then raising our new family member. That's a little bit of a hint right there. But, yeah, stay tuned, you guys. I have more videos to do. Um, uh, thank you guys still for watching. Like, I know, I've been gone for so long, like, too long, you know, and I'm sorry about that, but I just needed the time and the space to just process and take care of what I needed to do, because life was moving faster than a New York minute, you know, and it still kind of is, <laughs> you know, but it kind of always has been in my life, you know, and even living in a home, people would think, oh, you're putting down roots, and, um, you're putting down roots, you're, you're, things are going to change for you in your life. Everybody told me that and everybody was happy and I was happy in ways for a while but it made me realize more how much I, that I miss van life and why I do it and I, growing up my whole life, we never lived in one place very long so my whole life I never knew what it was to put down roots so I think that's why part of me even though I like this house, part of me always felt like itchy, like I need to go, I need to get out of here. Like this just, even though it's a good place, it just, it's not that it didn't feel right, it just, I don't know, I just kind of wanted to go back to van life, you know, and, and just certain things kind of ended up not working out here. But sometimes I think if you really want something, you'll make it work no matter what, but... I think a part of you also needs to know when to just be like, yeah, reevaluate it. And it's not giving up. It's just changing things because things change all the time, too. You know? Um, okay, I probably should wrap this up soon. But, yes, yeah, thank you guys still for watching. Sorry, I'm this talking head right now. Because I can't multitask. I can't. I mean, I can and I can't. I can't, like, drive and show you guys clips of my drives 
and talk because I live in a super crowded city and there's traffic and there's construction zones and there's just chaos everywhere. So there's no way I can really kind of do that, not in a video like this. So, you know, thanks you guys always for watching and still being here. I know, it's like I fell off the face of the planet. Everyone must have thought I died, got killed, kidnapped, I don't know, you know, but um, there's still so many videos that I have come in and in the works, you know. Um, but thank you guys, and I'll talk to you guys all later. I'm gonna really try to do videos more often. I always say that, I know, I know. And you know me, I'll pump out a couple of videos and then none for a while. And then do a couple of videos and then none for a while. So, yeah. Um, yeah, all right. Everybody take care. Thank you guys for watching. I know it's a long ass video probably, I'm sorry. But I didn't know, and I'm sure there's a lot more other stuff I wanted to say too, but I feel like that pretty much was the sum of it. You know, uh, everyone here is doing good, you know, and we're just preparing for our move and work and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> all right, everyone, talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for being around. And if you want to see the more videos that are coming up, you obviously got to like subscribe. And I feel like I got to tell you that because everybody says that at the end of their videos and at the beginning of their videos. Yeah. <laughs>